Hey guys and welcome! So the Reptile Expo season is upon us and as you may know I'm such a sucker for these Reptile Expos. I just love the whole experience and it is actually one of the highlights of my year going to them. I thought that it might be nice and useful of course for me to share some of my experiences from these Expos. If it is your first time or maybe even second and third, I thought that I might have some tips and tricks for you guys when going to these Expos so that you feel a bit more prepared when going in there because honestly said the Reptile community is quite different from some other communities that you may find. It's not that it's terrible or anything, not at all, actually quite a nice place to be, if you know the right people, of course. So I thought that I wanted to share some of these must-knows. So here goes. The first thing I thought that you guys might want to know is that it is a custom for many expos, I cannot talk for all of them, but I know for many, that a vet actually comes to check up on all the animals even before the expo is open. So the vet goes around, checks if the animals are healthy, and if they are not, they are actually asked to, if not leave, but to take away the animals. So they are quite strict on making sure that the animals are healthy. And there are certain rules that you must follow, like all the animals need to have heat on and all that kind of stuff. So all in all, when you go in on an expo to buy an animal, you can be almost sure that the animal is healthy. Of course, there can be some hidden illnesses, uh, as there can if you're buying any other animals, but in general, they have already made sure that the animals are healthy. Also, the vendors, of course, don't want to sell any sick animals, because that will give them a bad reputation. So in general, going to an expo, you are almost certain that you will get a healthy and functional animal. The next thing you might want to know, and something that caught me a little by surprise, is that there is actually quite a lot of different types of people. Not just talking about age, because you will find anything from a baby to a grandfather, but also the different types of people. The reptile community has the ability to inspire a lot of different types of people, thus making a lot of different types coming to these expos. So you will see many, many different types of people, and I find that very interesting, because I love going around talking to people, and that's also an excellent way to make new contacts, but I will get back to that later. The next thing you also might want to know is that there's going to be a lot of different languages. When you're talking to the vendors, they might not only speak, for example, when I go to an expo here in Denmark, uh, the vendors might not speak Danish, they could be speaking uh, German, Polish, English, and all those different kinds of languages. And it's actually very normal, because vendors from all over the world will gather at these reptile expos, it's actually quite normal, especially uh, when you're talking about the bigger ones, such as the one in Ham or in Houghton. Houghton. Not sure how to say that, but you get, you get what I'm saying. So you will most likely encounter a lot of different languages, but most of the time they will all speak English. When talking about the vendors, you know, the breeders, the ones who are selling these animals, overall they are actually quite friendly. So if you have any questions or anything, you can just ask them because they will most likely be more than willing to talk to you, to explain, to answer all of your questions. In general, people at these expos are actually quite friendly. So don't be shy and, and don't uh, think to yourself that, oh, that might be a stupid question. Just ask, like ask anything you want. The vendors will usually be more than happy to answer any questions you want because it's in their interest to help you to take care of these animals in the best way possible. So, like I said before, no stupid question, just ask away. When you are walking around looking at all of these different animals, you will most likely see the Latin names being written on their boxes. It's very, very common for people to use the Latin names because when you're using the common names, for example, the bull python, that's a common name, it's not the original Latin name, then well, with the bull python might be a bad example because pretty much everyone around the world know what we're talking about when we're talking about a bull python. But if you're going to buy uh, some more rare snakes, some more specific species of snake, then it's always a good idea to talk about the Latin name because then everyone knows what you're talking about. If you're using these common names, it's not sure that the, the vendor might know what you're talking about. And that is especially true with uh, buying tarantulas. Like I wanted to buy my Chaco Golden Knee and I remember coming up to a vendor and I just said to him, I would like a... a uh, Chago Golden Knee and he was like, I don't know what that is, I don't know. So <laughs> it's always a good idea to know the Latin name. If you're worried that you might not pronounce it correctly, you can always write it down on a piece of paper. That said, when we're talking about the more common species like corn snake, ball python, 
every one of them will most likely know what you're talking about, so no need about that. But if you're looking for more specific species, uh, and also if you're looking for uh, tarantulas, it's a very good idea to know the Latin name. Also, when you are looking at all these animals, you will see them packed into what may look like very tiny boxes. That is not to make the snake uncomfortable, because of course they do have bigger room to roam when they're in the terrarium or the rag or wherever you're keeping them. The reason why they are in these boxes is because, first of all, they're easy to transport and it makes it quite easy for you to see the animal that you're buying. So they are only in these boxes for a very short period of time, I hope. Some of them, they do travel, some of the vendors, they do travel for uh, many, many hours and then the animals will be transported in this box. And they might be a little bit stressed, you know, because they are in this box, not much room, and a lot of people, you know, like looking, poking, shaking or whatever. So they are only in this while they're at the expo or being transported. Which is also why that I say that when you get your animal home, put it in the terrarium and then leave it, because there is a reason that it might be a little bit stressed from this whole journey. So it's a good idea to give it some time to just chill, you know, get down to earth. But it's perfectly normal that they are in these small boxes, it's for transportation only. When talking about these boxes, you will most likely see a piece of paper on top of the box. That will contain the name of the animal, most likely the Latin name, and it will contain if it's either male or female. There are different ways that you can tell if it's male or female. Someone, they put the, um, what's it called, the sign for male or female, and someone uses uh, little dots, like a red is a female and a blue is a male, but most of them will be using uh, these series of numbers. And I've done a video where I'm uh, explaining it in full length. I've, of course, linked it down in the description box, but I'm just gonna go over it very, very quickly. It will most likely contain a three numbers and it will have a dot between each number. So if it, for example, says 1.0.0, that's a male. If it says 0.1.0, that's a female. If it says 0.0.1, that's uh, an unknown uh, sex. That, like they don't know if it's male or female. When I bought my Savannah monitors, it said 0.0.1 uh, on each box. That means that they know what animal they're selling, of course, they don't know if it's male or female. If you are in doubt, if you don't know if it's male or female, just ask. They will be more than happy to help you. But it's always a good idea to know that these are the things that you're looking for when you're looking to see if it's male or female, or if it is an unknown sex, of course. Most likely it would also contain, uh, without the Latin name and the male or female, it will also contain um, some do it, I think it's a really good idea, uh, where, where the animal is from and also some, some include the uh, humidity and the temperature. It's a very good idea. So it's, it's a little guide uh, right on the box. So, so if you are buying an animal, you know, it's a good idea to just keep the lid, you know, because then you can always go back or just to copy it down because it does have some valuable information for you. Another thing that you get when you buy an animal is a breeder certificate or a certificate of origin. I have some of them with me here, I'm just gonna show you. All right, so this is a breeder certificate. This is actually for Noel, my Bell Ball Python. I got that when I bought him. A breeder certificate has uh, all the information that you will need about your animal. And it's very important that you hang on to this because if you want to sell your animal again, this certificate's proof, the age, and also if it has any morphs in it. So it's very important that you keep this. I'm just quickly gonna go over it. It has most likely the common name, the one I talked about before. Usually there will also be the Latin name, it's right up here. And then there will be, this uh, says amount, but it says like it's um, it's a male and there is one of them. And then the date of birth, Some usually they will just write the month, it's very, very normal. And then down here, on this one they said, I hereby certify that the animal included in this document are bred and raised by the undersigned and are offspring from my legally obtained adult mention above. So, and also it will contain information about the breeder and that might be really good for you if you, let's say like a half a year after you have some questions, you can always write them. So a breeder certificate, it's very, very important and when you get it, hang on to it because it really does contain uh, a good amount of information that you might need on a later point. All right, so that was some general information about the expo that I thought might be valuable to you if you're going. Next on, I want to give some tips and tricks if you're going to an expo uh, and want to buy an animal. 
the first tips I want to give you guys is to know what you want to buy. If you're going to an expo not knowing what you want to buy, then you might, you know, buy something you didn't want to or not knowing and then you come home with nothing or you come home with uh, an animal that you don't really know but look kind of cool. So know what you want to buy. Make sure you do the proper research before so you know what the animal needs. And of course, I always recommend that you already have the terrarium all installed for the animal to go back home. But if you are buying the terrarium there, you need to be absolutely sure that you are going to get what you need to buy it. Because the ball python requires something entirely different than, for example, a lizard. So it's very important that you actually know what you want to get. The next tip is to not buy on impulse. I know how difficult it is, trust me. But if you are new in the reptile world, then buying on impulse is a very, very bad idea. Chances are that you may not have had time to research properly on the species and you don't have the necessary uh, equipment to care for it. And then it's happening, you get it home and then you rehome it very soon. Of course, there's nothing wrong with rehoming, don't get me wrong on that, but it is, it is very unwise to buy an animal that you don't have the proper equipment, the proper knowledge uh, to care for. That said, if you are well known in reptiles and you are buying an animal on impulse, well knowing that you can take care of it and you know this species, I mean, go ahead. I'm not the one to judge because I've done it too, but I know that I have the equipment at home or I will buy it and I know how to care for this animal. But general rule, know what you want before, don't buy on impulse. The next tip is something that all the vendors are gonna love me for, that's uh, buy extra. Like buy a lot of what you're getting. When I'm going to an expo, we always buy, we buy food, we buy substrate, we buy all the stuff that we need because chances are that you're gonna get a really good deal at these expos. Usually you can buy a lot and you can save a lot, uh, contrary to if you have to uh, order it online or you have to go to a pet store, pet stores are very expensive, but at these expo you, you can get quite a lot uh, for a decent amount of money. So when you're there, buy in, you know, like if you're having a snake, go buy a bunch of rats or mice that you can put in your freezer. It's absolutely worth it. The next one is uh, if you're going to one of these bigger expos, like for example the one in Ham, there's going to be a lot of people and it's going to be hot because all the animals need heat. So it's in general the temperature is going to be very, very high. A lot of people, a lot of uh, sweating, you know, like, and you can kind of easily get confused. So another tip is to go out and get some air. Like, don't just go in, do what you want, and then go out. Go in, have a look around, go out to get some air maybe some water, some food, and then go back in and have a look again. Because you can very easily, you know, like get distracted, everything is hot, so many people, and you can get confused, you know. So take a break once in a while, because the expo is not going anywhere, you know. Just because you step out for 10 minutes, it's still gonna be there when you get back in. And once you are at the expo, I really want you to get everything you can out of seeing all of these beautiful animals. I really want you to enjoy it. So make sure that you take some breaks, because it does get quite hot, a lot of people, so really, you know, I do that myself, I take two, maybe even three breaks when I'm especially at the one in ham to get some food, get some air, get something to drink, you know. So very good tip, just take care of yourself when you're at these expos. Another tip I want to give to you is that if you if you are not quite sure, like let's say that you want a ball python, but you're not quite sure what morph it should be, uh, go several rounds, like have a look at all the vendors before you decide. If you specifically know, like I want that one, I want a bell, and it's supposed to be a male, and you see one, then by all means buy that one. But if you're if you know the species, but you're not quite sure which one of them it should be, you know which morph, just take several rounds because you might be lucky that uh, a vendor in the other area, like in the other corner has a, a snake that's just you uh, whereas the one you're looking at is you know kind of a maybe so take several rounds take your time to have a look because in the end it will definitely be worth it Another tip for you is to also talk to people because at these expos there is this great opportunity to make some really good contacts. Like I said in the beginning, I love talking to people there. So if you have the opportunity, strike a conversation. People in general are very, very kind and they really want to talk to you. And that way you can actually get some exciting contacts. Maybe you can get in contact with a breeder that has this specific type of snake you really want and maybe they're breeding it next year. Or you can just like make some new friends. Like Timmy and I, we've actually made a lot of friends going uh, to these different expos so I can highly recommend that because I really want this reptile community to, to grow and you know and, and and for people to enjoy it together so if you are able to strike a conversations with someone make new friends and in general just share uh, this love we all have for reptiles 
another thing that expos are really good at is not only for you to come there and buy. If you have animals that you want to sell, it's also a great place to do that. Now, vendors, they book their tables uh, sometimes a year in, in advance. So you don't need to have a table if you just want to sell one animal. Usually there will be groups. Now I know Facebook kind of closed down um, the selling animals, but maybe in some debate forums or, or something like that, then people are actually very eager to trade, to sell and to buy from each other outside of the expos. It's actually very, very normal. I've done that too, like when I ordered one of my ball pythons, it wasn't inside the expo, I actually picked him up outside. But it's a great place to meet, you know, because everyone is going there. So it's a great place to trade, to sell and to buy. So if you are looking into maybe getting a snake that uh, from a vendor who doesn't have a table, or from a breeder who doesn't have a table, you can just make the arrangement and usually you can just get it outside the expo before going in. Last but not least, I really want you guys to enjoy yourself at an expo because for me it is um, I just love being there, you know, it, it's great, it's fun, just enjoy yourself, take your time, don't rush, don't, you know, don't don't think that you don't belong there or anything, just go and have a good time and ask, people are so friendly in there, have a good time, really guys, that's my, my, my utmost best uh, tips for you guys, just have a good time. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, if you have any comments or questions, just post them right there, uh, down in the comment section. I'm actually very curious to hear what your favorite expo is, and even so, what was your first experience on your first expo? Now that's something I would love to hear. If you would tell me that down in the comment section, I would be thrilled. Please leave a like if you did like the video, of course. If you want to see more, you're welcome to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for now, and bye bye!